So let's jump right in here are the data, here are all these numbers, the data of the age of students in a classroom. So you can see just reading this data, it is kind of nauseating to look at. It's just so many numbers, you can't really draw conclusions by looking at a list of numbers. So we create various buckets in a frequency table. We have ages five to nine, ages 10 to 14, ages 15, uh, older than 15. And you could create the table with more granularity in the ages, but these are the buckets that are created here. How do we proceed about uh, filling this table out. Well, what we do when we fill out the frequency column is we just need to count how many times students fall into this bucket, anybody between the ages of five and nine, how many times? So we have one, two, three, four, then we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And I'll just kind of like draw a little line right here because we've gone up through here. So these are all ages five through nine. Now notice this was easy because I've already ordered the data from smallest to largest. A lot of times you collect the data, it's all randomly, you know, it's in no order. So the first step often is just go ahead and order the data from smallest to largest is often very helpful. So there's nine different people that fall into this age bucket here. So under the frequency goes nine. Now how many from 10 to 14? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and these are all bigger than 14. So there's eight of them right here. And then how many larger than 15 or 15 plus means 15 or greater. We only have three people. So here are the data. Now, when you just look at this nine, eight, and three, it's just easier to look at than all of these numbers. Nine people are in this bucket. Eight people are in this bucket. Three people are in this bucket. Now, what do we do for the cumulative frequency? Remember, we learned in the last lesson, the cumulative frequency is just a running total of this column. So we start out by copying the same number. And then to get this number, it's nine plus eight, which is 17, it goes right here, right? And then to get this uh, position here, it's the 17 here plus the three more for a total of 20, like this. Now, the next step, is to write down the relative frequency. This is basically how many people answered in this range compared to the total number of respondents. Nine people answered out of total of 20. This cumulative frequency is just adding up all of the, the total number of respondents. We count all of these up and you're gonna get 20 different answers, 20 different data points. Here we have eight people in this bucket out of 20, so eight out of 20. And here is three people out of 20. So this is expressing the relative frequency, but as a fraction, okay? Now, we can also simplify these fractions. We don't have to, but we can, right? Now, 9 20 can't really simplify, but 8 20 can. We can divide both by four, right? And if we divide eight by four, we'll get two, and 20 divided by four, we'll get five. So really, 2 fifths is a simplified version of this. Now, how do we get the percentage? What we do is we take, you know, the fraction, 9 20 and we change the denominator to 100. We have to multiply by 5 to do that. 9 times 5 is 45, and 20 times 5 is 100. And once you have it out of 100, then you can say that the uh, percentage is 45%. Right? We do the same thing here, 8 out of 20, right? So 8 out of 20, we're going to multiply by 5. And what you get on the bottom is 100. When you get on the top is 40. So you get an answer of 40%. And same thing here. If I multiply by 5, 3 times 5 is 15. So this will work out to 15%. And when you add these all together, you're going to get 100%. So now we've started from nothing. And we've just taken the raw data and we filled out the frequency table. And we can see, let's look at our, our nice pretty version of the, of the chart. We can see that 45%, almost half, are in this age group. And, you know, 15% are older students. So you can see very easily that very small, uh, very low, uh, it's very low chance of getting a student at random, if you draw from random from this pool of people, to be older, older than 15 uh, years old, for instance. And that's hard to see from the data, really, especially if you're looking at thousands of data points. You can't really look at it and get a feel for it. You have to summarize it somehow, and that's what we're doing. Now let's take a look at problem number one. How many children are over the age of nine? Over the age of nine means larger than nine. We don't count this because this is up to and including nine. Older than nine are here. So eight plus three is 11. So 11 kids are older than nine. What percentage of children are under 15? Under 15, under 15. That means anybody over here. So not 15 plus, under 15. So 45% 
plus 40%, you add those together and you get 85% are under 15. All right, so take your raw data, put your frequency uh, tabulations in there, and then everything is calculated in sequence as we've done. Let's take this down and solve our next problem. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. Here we're taking a survey of the size of various households, right? So we take a survey of you know families, and this person has one people, person in the house, and then we have some people with two people in their household, and some people with three, and some people with four, and some people with five. And I've already ordered this data from smallest to biggest. I always recommend you do that first. Now, we have different buckets, one through six for the household size. Now we're gonna fill in the frequency. How many of our data has only one uh, size of the household? There's only one data point, so only one fits into this bucket. How many have two? One, two, there's only two there. Uh, there's the third one. So there's number three that have a household size of two. How many have a household size of three? One, two, three, four, five. So there's five people with a household size of, of uh, three. How many with a household size of four? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven people have a household size of four. How many have a household size of five? Only two of them. And how many with six? Again, only two of them. So I have one, three, five, seven, two, two. All right, so then I turn my attention to the cumulative frequency. Remember, the cumulative frequency is a running total of this column. So we always start out by having and matching the first element here. And then we add up, one plus three is four. And then this was four plus the five more is nine. And then this nine plus the seven more, that worked out to be 16. And then we have this 16 plus two more is 18. And then the 18 here plus two more is 20. So the total of all of the respondents, if you count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 people responded in total. Now the next step, is to write down the relative frequency. That's how many responded in this way uh, compared to uh, with uh, the total amount of respondents. So one person answered this out of a total of 20. That's the ratio, 1 20th, right? Here, three people answered this way out of, again, 20. It's always gonna be out of 20, 20. Here's five out of 20. Here's seven out of 20. Here's two out of 20. And here's two out of 20. Now, we can leave it like that or we can simplify these fractions like we always should. Now, these can't be simplified, but 5 twentieths can work out to be 1 fourth because you can divide by 5, divide by 5, and you get 1 fourth. That you can't simplify. Here you can divide by 2 and you will get 1 tenth. And you will get 1 tenth. So you really should write down the simplified fraction if you can. Now we take a look at the... Um, uh, relative frequency as a percentage. We take the 1 20th. How do we change it into 100 on the bottom? We multiply by 5 on the top and the bottom. We get 5 out of 100. And so 5 out of 100 is 5%. And if we do that process the same, we multiply by 5 here, 5 top, 5 bottom, we're going to get 5 times 3 is 15%. Multiply by 5 on the top, 5 times 5 is 25%. Multiply by five, seven times five is 35, we'll get 35%. Multiply by five, five times two is 10, this will be 10%. And same thing here, it's exactly the same answers. Now double check, the, the percentages should add to 100. So here you have 20, then plus 25 is 45, and then the 45, then you have 50, and then 80 when you add the 30, and then 90, 100. So they all add up to 100%, which makes sense because of all the data you collected, you should have all the, all the, uh, the percentages of everything uh, add up to 100. So what this is telling you at a glance is, for instance, only 5% of the people who responded are, uh, have a household size of one. And only 10% had a household size of six. But if you look in the middle, 25% uh, or have a household size of three, and 35% have a household size of four. Now it's much, much easier to digest that because you can just look and, and get a feel for where most of your population is lying without looking at these raw numbers. Now if you looked at these raw numbers, you could probably get a pretty good feel for, for who's answering. But if uh, this only had 20 data points, what if I gave you like 50,000 data points? Like you couldn't look at a file and, and figure it out. You would have to boil it down to percentages, and this is how we do it. All right, let's take a look at problem, or I should say, let's go to our, this is our pretty version. All we've done here 
is uh, recopy the chart with the everything filled in with what I've already shown you. Now let's move on to the question. How many households have a size under four? Under four, not bigger than four, under four. So here's four, these are bigger. Everything under four are all of these. How many? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Only nine households of our data points have a household size under four. What percentage have a household size over three? Whoops, over three. Looks like I messed that up. Let's go over here. Over three. So here's three. And over three are all of these three right here. So if we add these percentages up, 35, then 45, then 55 percent. 55 percent have a household size over three. I could tell my paper was getting caught behind there, so I just used the the original chart that we had. So some simple little questions, but you see how easy it is. If I just tell you the data, if I just give you the data and say, what percentage uh, have a household size over three, you would never be able to do, you could figure it out, but it would be it would be tough. You'd have all these numbers, maybe you miscount, you know, but putting it in a table forces you to write everything down, forces you to be able to check, Does do the percentages add to 100? Do, does the cumulative frequency match what I think it should be? That kind of stuff. If you don't make a table, then sometimes you can miscount, you can miscalculate, and you'll never check yourself, that kind of thing. So that's what we're learning how to do here. That is the last problem we have here. Follow me on to the next lesson. We will solve a few more problems involving creating and interpreting a frequency table. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.